One talented filmmaker, Deborah Granick, has a true pioneering spirit. She's an independent director who operates on the margins away from Hollywood to tell strong stories steeped in realism. Kizzy Cox reports. Is your dad in the service? He was. Do you feel safe living with your dad? We didn't need to be rescued. Like the female leads in her films, director Deborah Granick has a strong independent streak. But growing up, she rarely saw complexity expressed in female characters on screen. I wondered my whole growing up, like, oh, you know, does coming of age for girls have to be absolutely pivoted around like a first love? But that's just not the only way that you, that a, that a female starts the next chapter of her life. So I was interested. Sometimes it means emancipating yourself. You know, from someone you love very much, a parent that, you're, that you've been very interdependent with. Um, it can mean having to take a very fierce stance in your family, in your kinship system. That maybe it's an unpopular stance, you know. Um, it can be um, severing a relationship that wasn't good for you. Her films also ask hard questions about society. In Leave No Trace, which follows a solitary veteran and his teen daughter who live off the grid in the North Pacific woods, some of the key questions are, why is homelessness so rampant in a wealthy country? And how effectively do we take care of veterans and treat post-traumatic stress disorder? My daughter's with me. While Deborah Granick is based in New York City, her films feature locations throughout the United States. And her pioneering spirit comes through in the characters she chooses, as well as the topics she covers. No death-defying car chases or superheroes in tights. Her films, like the Oscar-nominated Winter's Bone and her latest, Leave No Trace, are steeped in the world of everyday people and their real-life struggles. They're part of a genre called social realism. I think it might be easier on us if we try to attack it. So in my mind, uh, social realism is, I align myself with a kind of global and long-running film movement, which is stories that come out of everyday life. Stories that come out of the, you know, another way of saying it, stories that come out of the lives of ordinary people. And in those lives frequently are some inherent struggles. There's no safety net. Things aren't just given readily. In fact, there may be a lot of obstacles just to get basic needs met. And so watching people navigate is part of that story. How are they gonna do it? What, what resources, what, what links do they build to other people? What's their strategy? So it's, it's, it is the art and beauty of survival and kind of loving on people for doing it. I'll find him. Girl, I've been looking. I said, I'll find him. The freedom to make these types of films ties into Granick's independence and decision to stay outside of Hollywood. I have purposely stayed outside because the kinds of films I want to make don't aren't a good match there, right? So it's, it's not a big polemic. It's much more like this practical matter where I do make films that deal with lives, people sometimes term on the margin, and it's required that I stay on the margin. So that's, that to me is, is the key, is that you cannot wait to be invited, you know? You have to start connecting with other people on the margins. What's very wonderful, in my opinion, about the independent film movement is that men have been supporting women in the independent movement for years. So, you know, little known secret, you know? <laughs> the independent film movement is filled with men who enjoy working with women, who've been liaising with them since I've been making films. Granick is a filmmaker with impressive talent who stands by her principles and uses her independence to create films that stand out, making her a trailblazer for the next generation of young female filmmakers. Where are you guys headed? I don't think we knew where we were going.